Hi everyone, I am not going to do a craft video today, but I am showing you a product that I just got and I wanted to do just a review on it. This is the Jam and Jelly Maker from Ball. Um, it's called Fresh Tech. And the little story behind this, I went in to my local, I call them a five and dime store because they kind of have real good prices. But they had canning jars on sale and I needed some. And when I walked in, they had these on display. He had, I think he had four of them and a display item. And I asked him about it and he said, we only sold one. I have no reviews on it. I don't know anything, if it's good, if it's not. So I came home and researched it and every review I saw, they, people loved them. They said it was so easy to make jam and I wanted to make jam, but I, I didn't want to stand at the stove and have to stir the pot and you know, it's almost like candy making to me. It's just way too difficult. So I, um, I had planted 125 strawberry plants this year and next year I know I'm going to be killed with strawberries. So I wanted something that was going to be easy and I found this and I went back the next day. He had one left. So I bought the one that he had left and my kids and I went out and picked wild raspberries and I made raspberry jam and it only makes four half pints so it's like the small the smaller jars here I got one sitting over here I'll show you it only makes this size jar it's a four ounce jar and it'll make four four ounce jars in a session or um, per batch so I kind of was a little disappointed with that but then after reading the manual I came with it's because you know if you try to double it or make more than that it may not set and I'm like okay that's fine so um, actually we made two batches that day and it took less than an hour to make two batches because the whole process takes 20 minutes in the jam maker and then 10 minutes in the canner so by the time you get one done and you're ready to go with the next one you can just kind of zip right through them as long as you got all your stuff ready to go so let me swing over here and I'm going to show you what you need to make your jam. It is so easy. So hang on just a second. Okay. So the jam I'm making, I just use the regular sugar recipe. Um, it takes three and a third cups of sugar for this recipe, a little bit of butter to stop the foaming, some pectin, and my raspberries. Now these raspberries I know five cups of the non-crushed raspberries, once you crush them, equals the two and two and two thirds cup I think is what we needed of uh, berries to make the batch so what I we did is we picked them all and then I you know came home picked all the bugs most of the bugs out of them the sticks the big stuff and we put them in the freezer we measured out five cups and put them in the freezer so they're ready to go so hang on a second and I'm going to get ready to start a new batch and I'll show you how so easy our machine is ready. It is flashing down here. Before, if you noticed, it said CO, which just meant that it was cooling down. Here I have three tablespoons of pectin and you have to use the classic pectin. Um, I did buy the low sugar pectin to make a low sugar recipe, but I called the company because the book didn't say anything about it and they said you can't use the low sugar one because it doesn't work yet. Um, they're still developing recipes. So you put this in the bottom, just sprinkle it around in the bottom of the machine as evenly as you can. Then we are going to take our raspberries and I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the camera off to do this because I don't think I can do this one-handed, but I will show you before I put the lid on and hit okay, start. Okay, I have my berries in there and my pectin and a little pat of butter. Um, I think it says like half a tablespoon or half a teaspoon. I don't know. I just kind of just put a pat of butter in there. That helps it from foaming up while it's cooking. And we're going to be adding the sugar after four minutes. It'll beep and tell us and we'll put our sugar in. So down here on the front, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, I'm going to put the lid on. I'm going to hit jam. It'll go to 21 minutes and you hit enter. And it will start to turn. And in four minutes, we'll add the sugar. And then in 21 minutes, we'll be ready to can. 
Okay, we're almost ready to put the sugar in. Um, when it hits 17 minutes, it'll beep four times. We put our sugar in, and then it'll cook for the rest of the way. Okay, we just beeped. So I'm going to take the amount of sugar for this recipe, which is three and one third cups, which I know is a lot, but I'm not doing the low sugar recipe on this. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Okay, you can see it cooking in there. So all I'm going to do is as this spins around, I'm just going to pour the sugar in. Okay, there we go. We're going to put the lid back on. And in 17 more minutes, it'll be ready to put in jars. Okay, still got a little while to go, but I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek in here. And you can see it's bubbling and stirring away. And it maintains the temperature it needs to to create this jelly, so you don't have to, you know, stand over your stove and do all the stirring and everything. Okay, the jam maker just shut off the beeps and told me it was done, so I'm going to take the lid off. And it's extremely hot. So, ow. Okay, so I have my jars ready, and I'm going to get ready to ladle my jam in. I have to grab my spatula or my, I have to grab my scoop. Okay, so I'm going to ladle them in here into the jar. Now, I'm going to move this a little closer. Put it in here. Um, you want to put it in and leave a quarter inch headspace on your jar, which just means between where the jam, where your filling ends, and your jar rim is. It should be about a quarter of an inch. So that might be full. And if you get too much in there, you can just scoop it out. That was a little over full. And I found that you have to kind of work quickly with this because it will try to set up. I guess it was worse when I had the air conditioner on. It seemed to set a little faster than it is today. Okay, and then it usually makes a little bit more than four of these jars. And I have a jar, it's sitting behind everything here, that I just keep, and I'll put, it doesn't usually fill it, so I just keep that there. Just a second. Throw that in the sink. I usually just keep that there to um, put the excess in, and then I'll just use that right away. Just let it cool and then put it in the refrigerator. I don't get too crazy exact signs with this or anything. So, okay, so then what I do is I take, I have my little magnetic thing, pop my lids. Oh, before I do that, look at my rag. Excuse me. And we're going to clean the rims off. You want to do this so you get a good seal. Now, my drawers were not real hot when I pulled them out of the oven. They cooled a bit. But when you put this in here, it is like boiling hot sugar. So you want to be very careful when you're handling your drawers because these drawers now are extremely hot from the content. Ow. So if you try to touch around the bottom of these, they will burn you. Anything that's on these rims will interfere with your seal. Okay, we're good to go. So we'll go ahead and put our lid on, or our cap on. And I just have these simmering in some hot water. Um, not only does it help sterilize it, it will um, soften up that lip on there so we get a better seal. 
okay. We've got our bands back here. Screw the bands on. Now you just want to go finger tight. You don't want to crank these all the way down. It's just to hold it in place for right now. Ow. And then what we'll do is we'll put them in the water bath and I'm going to process these for 10 minutes and then shut the heat off and let them sit for another five in the water. So here's all my finished jam. I don't know if you just heard that pop. That was one of the lids that um, was getting sucked down. I think they're all already down. Um, they'll sit here until they're cool. Probably till tomorrow I'll leave them sit here. And um, so that's it. And this jar here is all the extra. It does make a little more than four. So I just throw it in a jar and then I'll just use that for toast and stuff for the week. And that's it. It's that easy. Um, I'm already have everything washed and cleaned up and ready to be put away as soon as the machine cools itself down enough. And there you go. An hour it took me to do um, eight half pints of raspberry jam. So if you're looking for something that's easy to make jam in, I highly recommend this machine because I think it's outstanding. Uh, so that's my two cents. Okay, bye.